to get started, I'd like to touch on a specific client case study. Two of the people from T2 Systems are on the call. With Amy and Kelsey here to keep me on the straight and narrow, let me start by talking about some of the challenges that were being faced by T2. Amy and Kelsey had legacy content that was in Word and not specifically written for DITA. However, with the two of them as writers, the content was pretty consistent and of higher than average quality in my opinion. The content could end up being common to most publications but needed to be customized for different audiences. So two products could be 90% the same, but to write two complete sets of manuals ended up being really impractical. So they had to deliver different things, but the resources were limited. In some cases, they also had materials without necessarily having a proper home. That is, the documentation was floating around, not necessarily authored by them, and that doesn't have a defined deliverable for it. Maybe support ends up writing a one-off resolution, delivers it to a custom or an installation consultant expanded on a procedure. Dinner and a CMS provided an easier home for this type of information. So now they write up one solution, fit it into a map, and it has a home. Some of the information wasn't needed for online or for print, some for a help system, and a bunch of other types of output that they had to work with. And this becomes a lot of maintenance. Control of every version and being able to review and compare the files that are modified always becomes difficult. Think of your own environment. Instead of having, say, 18 different folders with 43 revisions and hundreds of file names, content could just be better managed. They also had a challenge of getting started. Knowing that the differences between repository and the files, the content management system, and all of the various parts that work together takes a bit of time to get used to. The difference between the content portal, for example, as opposed to the knowledge base could lead to some issues kicking in. It's sort of like trying to figure out the difference between a website and an intranet, or even the difference between types of trees. If all you're seeing is the forest, it gets difficult to tell if one of them is a specific type that you need to work with. So there's similarities and there's differences. Early on, the overlap of ideas may present challenges to making technology work. Add to all of this issues between writers and their audiences, reviewers, managers, clients, and so on, it's really an involved set of starting variables that kick in. In most cases, if only the writers end up with access to the content management system and to the source files and tools, you end up doing all the work all the time, and we want to avoid that. So during the session, you're going to see how these issues can be overcome. Looking back at the end of the project, it's easy to find a few more lessons that would have been ideal to learn earlier. The learning curve can be steep when you try to do a lot on your own. I think it's safe to say that early on, the involvement of people like Scott, Ninad, and myself really made it a lot easier to move ahead at T2. But some of our conversations were limited to only parts of the team. It can be tough for an IT department to figure out what a CMS server does without regular interaction with the company behind the tech. Regardless of what IT might think, get them talking to the vendor sooner, not later. In any type of a publishing environment, there's going to be issues that come up. Be aware that as you continue to push boundaries, new things will pop up. T2 has a maintenance plan for support, and every month I talk with the two of them for a couple of hours just to touch base, troubleshoot, offer tips, and see how things are going. When you try to do everything at once, there's a significant, if temporary, loss of productivity. Management may want to think that you can just you know, slam the documentation into a CMS and everything works but they tend to get surprised at the amount of work that's involved. This project was a complete rework of how T2 produced and published documentation, and data and structured frame aren't anything like what management has experienced before. The result was that the two of them couldn't really start to get the effort through as far as what's involved to management until we were able to do a collective dog and pony show. So in spite of all the information work that had been done in advance, there ended up having to be a presentation made to management, and it had to be as much live as possible. And that's what you're going to see here, a live demonstration of the products. And finally, FrameMakers touted as a way to, and I'm quoting here, quote, take advantage of DITA 1.1 support, including book map indexing and glossary specification. It also says that with DITA maps, you can, quote, easily view, navigate, and edit documents. There's also mention that you can, and again I quote, work more efficiently in structured authoring and DITA workflow environments. So the Adobe site mentions that FrameMaker is a powerful authoring and publishing solution for TechCom, and it's true. However, like all good marketing, there's a lot happening behind the scenes that you may not know about up front. If you don't have a background in DITA and FrameMaker and developing templates, at the beginning of the project, DITA becomes a PITA, a pain in the ass. 
there's work that you're going to have to do, and it's not all point and click. But once it's set up, it works really nicely. That's what you'll see today. The net results speak pretty much for themselves. At T2, there's better overall documentation being produced. The reader gets a clear and consistent message in part because of the DITA and the CMS implementation. The content can be reused so that nobody has to write the same thing twice. There's a reduction in overhead for the writers, and yes, they did have to change some of their writing approach. The reaction to the knowledge base, which you'll see today as well, has been very favorable. It's a fantastic feature, and it's included in the CMS. There's no additional charge for the stuff that you're going to see. There's direct linking to content in the CMS and in other tools that work with the CMS. The content can be converted to PDF by the reader, not the writer and then print it as required. This dramatically cuts down time. If you think about how long it takes you to save PDF documents and make sure the right ones are available to your audience, it takes forever. Finally, they've also got access to online documentation so that nobody has to take any time away from writing to track down the latest copy. Now to get to the point, several things had to be done. Setup and configuration, tools implementation, and more. But the net benefits dramatically outweigh the initial cost in time, effort, and dollars. So, to implement a solution, T2 had to do several things. The first was to change the way content was written. In their case, the changes weren't major as it was already generally organized. I worked on the initial content, looking at it, did an audit of the materials, and found that we could port it to DITA with general ease. We had to convert legacy content and templates to frame because the word support for DITA just isn't there. Some of the demands we plan to put on the documentation asked for more. We also had to convert legacy files to DITA, not all of them, but the ones that needed to go into the CMS. And finally, we did have to implement the CMS and its tools to get everything working together.